With the deadline to raise the debt ceiling fast approaching in just two weeks, President Biden is going to cut short his overseas trip and return to Washington on Sunday. So far, he's leaving the door open to what the White House is calling modest changes to work requirements for entitlement programs like food stamps, something Republicans are demanding, but Democrats like Bernie Sanders strongly oppose. You do not balance the budget on the backs of children and elderly, the elderly, and working families and force kids to go hungry. I mean, that is insane. And joining me now is Republican Congressman Ken Buck of Colorado, who is against raising the debt ceiling and says neither Republicans nor Democrats have put forth a serious solution to address U.S. debt. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. You have dismissed the sort of the doomsday scenarios if the U.S. defaults. Are you not worried about the impact on the economy? Well, first of all, Andrea, I am not uh, opposed to a debt ceiling bill. I am opposed to this debt ceiling bill. I think we need to do more. We have $58 trillion of debt under the Biden plan in 10 years. We have $53 trillion of debt under the Republican plan, and that's unacceptable. So I very much hope that we get to a debt ceiling uh, bill that actually deals with the spending issue that we have to deal with. There's a bipartisan bill now in the House that would block pay for members of Congress if the U.S. defaults. Now, I know that's a drop in the bullet bucket, but it's symbolically important. Would you support that? Yes, I would. And why not get rid of the Trump tax cuts as one step to tackle the deficit, as Democrats are, are requesting or putting on the table? Yeah, the, the, during the Trump uh, tax cut debate, uh, there was a, a fascinating uh, back and forth between Republicans and Democrats over whether that creates more revenue or decreases revenue to the federal government. When we have high corporate taxes, we have corporations in this country that move offshore. Uh, the, the attempt was to move those corporations back. We saw an increase in revenue. I don't know that we've seen a, a long enough period of time to know exactly what's going to happen, but I am not in favor of, of raising corporate taxes at this point in time as a vehicle to increase revenue. I just don't think it happens. Do you see a compromise on the work rules if the president, who's now supporting some what he calls modest changes in the work rules for entitlements, do you see a compromise there that you would support? Well, I think that uh, the Speaker uh, has been to the White House a, a couple times a day now. Uh, he is very confident that there will be a compromise on the work rules. And I think that uh, that will be supported uh, ultimately by uh, many Republicans and some Democrats. I have to see what ultimately uh, is presented to us before I make any decision. Can you see yourself supporting something that the Speaker endorses? You have that oh, absolutely. You have confidence in him? Okay. I have confidence in, in Speaker McCarthy, and, and Speaker McCarthy knows exactly what I want. We have to reduce discretionary spending in this country. Uh, let's talk about 2024. Who would be better positioned to defeat Joe Biden, do you think, Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis, who are clearly the two leading candidates right now? As far as the race, I think it's so up. early. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I think it's so early uh, to try to call uh, something like that. But I think both of them uh, stand a good chance. I've seen polling that shows that Donald Trump may be ahead by a point or two, that Ron DeSantis may be ahead by a point or two. I think ultimately we've got to see the test of time, having candidates go through a primary process, uh, beat each other up, frankly, and, and see who comes out stronger. Do you have any concerns about the, uh, the jury that unanimously found Governor, excuse me, former President Trump liable for sexual abuse and defamation in New York? I, I don't know enough about that case and, and about the jury. I'm sure that there will be appeals based on jury selection. I'm sure there will be appeals based on the, uh, whether the evidence was sufficient uh, to warrant the findings. But I, I don't know uh, anything about that particular jury. Do you have any other concerns about the legal baggage surrounding former President Trump in terms of the investigations in Georgia, uh, Mar-a-Lago, classified documents, January 6th? Yeah, I, I, I do, Andrew. I think this, this president has been under more scrutiny probably than any elected official uh, in the history of the United States. And I think that uh, we really need to question whether that's what we want to do as a republic. Um, if he has committed a crime, so be it. But to put him, I, I believe there are a dozen now civil and criminal, uh, criminal investigations and civil cases. Um, and, and that is really a, a burden that uh, we need to rethink if we're going to have the very best people in this country run for president of the United States. 
And from what you've seen so far, uh, what, what do you think about Governor DeSantis? You served with him in the House, so you know, you've known him for quite some time. Yes, I sat next to Ron in uh, the Judiciary Committee for four years. A very bright uh, uh, politician and, and person. And uh, I think a lot of Republicans are very happy with how he handled the COVID situation as a governor in Florida. So I think that gives uh, many Republicans uh, confidence that when faced with difficult issues, he will do his very best to balance the interests. Do you think that he would be a better candidate would you support him over Donald Trump? Like I said earlier, I think it's very early at this point to know um, what kind of baggage is out there for either of those candidates. I think we're going to have other good candidates, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, others uh, that will present and we'll see uh, exactly who uh, is able to handle uh, the fire and the chaos of, of primaries the best and, and come out uh, as a likely winner in, in the, uh, uh, for the general election. And yesterday, the House Republicans blocked Democrats' attempt to expel disgraced Congressman George Santos after he pleaded guilty to fraud charges uh, earlier, fraud charges in Brazil. Do you... Now, you joined your colleagues in voting to send the matter to the Ethics Committee, which would be just delaying quite a while. Why not expel him now? Because he hasn't been convicted, and, and we have a process in the House that we have followed for uh, decades, if not centuries, where uh, someone uh, is charged with a crime and they don't sit on committees anymore. When they're convicted of a crime, they are uh, asked to resign. If they don't resign, they're expelled, uh, convicted of a felony. Um, it has happened for to Democrats, it's happened to Republicans. But to make this a special case and to say that for some reason uh, uh, George Santos is uh, unlike all the other cases that have come before the House, I don't think is fair. And so I think we did the right thing. Um, he will have his day in court. We believe in this country that a, a defendant is innocent until proven guilty. Um, and we'll see what happens after his trial. Uh, Congressman Ken Buck of Colorado, thank you very much. Uh, let's talk again as we proceed on this debt ceiling track. Appreciate it. Thank you.